had to decide if being an artist was more important than keeping the festival going. And I look at it as an accomplishment that I have pulled it off, but I think it's a testament to stepping away from something you love to preserve something you love. For me, it's, I usually paint over paintings weekly. So I paint maybe about seven to nine paintings a week. And then the following week, if it doesn't sell, I usually paint over with a whole new idea. So honestly, the power washing thing is uh, just someone else giving me closure. <laughs> They're off in the Kentucky Derby. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ville Chillin' Podcast. Today, we are talking to Dusty Saravo, organizer for Via Calori, and Kayla Morgan, the featured artist for 2024. How are you guys doing today? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is exciting, Kayla. I'm excited. Are you excited? The stuff I drag you into. My my heart is beating out of my chest, but that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have you been on a podcast before or done anything like this before, Kayla? Um, I'm trying to get into it, but um, no. I've no. done a radio show a couple times, but never like my voice in my face at the same time. Yeah. So this will be interesting because I'm like a face expression type of person. <laughs> that's perfect, though. It's an adjustment for sure. But I think that's awesome. Thank you for being willing to come on and do this for the yes. first one. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so why don't you both give us a little bit of like your background just in, in general, as far as mm -hmm. like art and the festival. And then we'll get into mm -hmm. some more of that. But Dusty, you want to go first? Sure. So um, I am the event coordinator for Via Calori, which is a street painting festival in case, you know, nobody figured that out with all the paintings going on. <laughs> we are located in Louisville. I have been the event coordinator of this event um, for entirely too long. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, so I guess I started with the festival um, 85 million years ago and there were dinosaurs um, back when it was in Bardstown. Um, it was like I don't know, 20 artists, maybe. I don't even think there were that many. Um, and there's a whole reason why. And it it was good for me to do that. And then um, the second year it was in Bardstown, then it moved to Elizabethtown and it was rocking and rolling and doing its thing. And I was painting and it was great. And once a year and all the things. And then they canceled it. And I was like, wait, what? Oh, no. <laughs> And so I called my boss at the time and I was like, I think I can do this. Can we do this? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, you know, Princess. edited version for it. And so uh, I ran it. We moved it to Louisville in 2017. 2020 happened. 2021, Girl Scouts decided to take it over. Conveniently, I work there. So it's actually really wonderful for me. It helps. <laughs> and um, it's literally and so, going you know, we're on our fourth year, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, we're on our fourth year with Girl Scouts. And this is the 16th annual VIA. It's old enough to drive at this point. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> That's so crazy. It's And it's awesome that you've been so involved for so long. You, know, you, said, that, you spelled insane wrong. I think the word you're looking for is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> And Kayla, Kayla's been with me. Um, I met her in 2022, right? And um, she was, you know, ha about to have a baby and very, very pregnant and on the ground painting amazing artwork. And then she came last year and then we met. It. There's a whole committee that meets to decide the featured artist. And it was a no brainer. So that takes some uh, dedication, though, you oh, know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, go ahead. Why don't, what were you about to say? And why don't you give us a little bit of your background in art and everything? We know that you you can see the art on your wall. And, oh, yeah. you know, we we saw what was on the website. So um, a little bit about me background wise is uh, I did Louisville visual arts classes from nine to 16. Um, I went into sports from 16 
all the way up until 21. And then I went back into art and uh, went full time at 23. I'm on year five as a full time artist. Um, me and my fiance both own the business of Who Don't Love Art. He's kind of like a detailed, uh, very like sharp line. I'm more of like a freestyle type of artist, very quick. Mm-hmm. Um but I kind of paint to narrow down like all my ideas. I kind of paint uh, my main subject is basically the life of a black person. So it could be like the joy, the sadness, the tragedy. But I try to wrap it all into one canvas to where if you look a little bit deeper uh, past the cuteness, you'll see like a bigger uh, picture. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Um, and one thing that she failed to mention is that we have, um, so we have 127 spots and sometimes artists won't show up. They get sick. There's an emergency, whatever. It's okay. It happens. Um, Mm -hmm. Kayla will like take on three or four of those extra 10 foot spots by herself and paint these amazing pieces of artwork. Like in, I don't know, 15 seconds. It's crazy. But that's crazy. So you you kind of just spoke to that and that you're very quick. You know, it's kind of it's it's down and, you know, down and dirty, for lack of a better term. You just do it quick. Mm-hmm. Get the thoughts, get the emotion onto something and just let it ride. And that's so cool. Thank you. It usually takes me like the average painting, like the sizes behind me take me about 90 minutes. And then uh, larger pictures, I think max is like 24 by 36, and it'll take me about two to three hours. And that's crazy because there are people who could spend a lot more time on that than than that. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. My fiance takes uh, two weeks for the same size. Yeah. And by that time, I done painted on that same canvas like four or five times because I usually paint over things that don't sell. So <laughs> Gotcha. No, that's... That's so cool. I think that's amazing because it you're not thinking too much about it. You're just letting the emotion and the creativity flow. Um, you're not overthinking it. And I mean, everybody has their own art style on it. So it's cool to hear that, you know, you have that blend. That balance. Definitely. Yeah, that's a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Dusty, you already kind of mentioned how and where and when the festival started. It's been going on forever. Um, Mm -hmm. we've kind of talked about how long you've both been involved. So what prompted the move from like Barstown to E-Town, E-Town to Louisville? Was it just the growth? Um, you know, the Bardstown to E-Town one, I can't speak on. I was not part of the planning committee at that point. So that would have been, um, it's third year. So the first two years were in Bardstown. Um, the second year I was actively involved starting to recruit more artists. Um, I recruited musicians and an MC and all the things, um, cause I felt like there was something there. Um, it moved to E-Town and I can't speak on the why, probably space. Um, and so they could grow, right. Mm-hmm. Cause that's kind of the point where they were at in Barstown was very small. It wasn't a main street. It was like, I don't know, the alley of like a church, um, gotcha. so it was just a small location. Um, and then it moved to E-Town and it was in the summer and it was awful because, you know, it's a hundred degrees. Mm. And so the pavement then will yeah. fry you like an egg. So, um, <laughs> but they, you know, so I guess it was three years they were in E-Town, um, when it got canceled. And so when I took it over, the decision to keep it in E-Town relocated to the fall. So like, you know, you were being fried. Um, Mm -hmm. it it made sense. And then, um, at the end of 2016, when we, um, went to do all the paperwork and all the things, there were lots of small town politics involved. And, um, I'm from Philadelphia and sometimes I don't, I don't play well with small town politics. (laughs) And, um, you know, I probably said some things I shouldn't have and other people said some things they should have. It didn't matter. It's, it's water under the bridge. It it worked Um, out. Yeah, it worked out. Um, And then I reached out to Waterfront Development Corporation and they were like, sure, come on up. And, and then we talked about when, and so we looked at October and we have just been historically on the third week of October, which is is perfect for me because 
I love spooky and spooky mm-hmm. things. And I lay in those dark art arenas. And so um, now I was like, yeah, you know, I get to do it in the fall, fall. And Excellent. we've been in Louisville since 2017. And so um, it's had three different charities. It always has to have a charity beneficiary. And now we're Girl Scouts. And um, I know I work there and I do it. It's great. And I love my job. But I, I get to see firsthand what it does, right? Like, I get to see what this festival does for these girls and what yep. these girls go on to do for the world. And I'm like, rah, rah, girl power. I'm all here for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's um, it, it's been fun in Louisville. I mean, it really has. We have had every possible thing you could think of because, you know, keep Louisville weird. And um, exactly. we just roll with it. And that's so cool. And I think that's perfect. You know, as you were saying, I think it was before we started recording, but just an amalgamation of so many different things, you know, it it keeps it weird, but you know what weird keeps it fun. Yeah. And you know, you find that there are people that want to help. Well, how Mm -hmm. do the guys from the 501st or the Mandalorian Mercs with their Star Wars cosplay, um, how does that fit with an art festival? How do mermaids fit with an art festival? How does, Mm -hmm. you know, vendors that are selling whatever, as long as it's fabulous, fit with an art festival? Um, And and music, you have to have music, but I have kid bands, right, perform. And so um, it's a... How do you say no? How do you say, yeah. you know, how, so I want to help. How can I help you? And you're like, hmm, I don't know. Well, I dress up like Godzilla. I'm fine. Show up at the festival and take pictures <laughs> with people. I do not care. Like, come help. Come be a part of it. Because it's, I can't explain it. You guys haven't been there. Everybody tells me I am terrible at explaining it. And then people get there and they're like, okay, this makes sense. Because it doesn't make sense until it makes sense. Gotcha. And we will be there. Um, we're, I'm so excited. We're, we're very much planning to be there. I'll have my daughter with me. She's excited when she saw, you know, when I was looking at the website and she saw the drawings and stuff, she's, she's, she's ready. She's been doing chalk drawings outside. <laughs> she's practicing <laughs> <Yay>! now. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, she's excited. So it'll be fun. Um, you kind of just spoke on it. Like what does it take to organize something this big? Like you say, how do you say no, but how do you manage to reply in all the emails, phone calls, however you do it? Like, how long does that take? And what does that feel like with the artists, the vendors, the sponsors, the community, just advertising for people to actually show up? So I am, I have an amazing team, right? And so I have a logistics coordinator. His name is Justin. I tried to drag him on this too. And he told me he would quit. (laughs) And since he's a volunteer, I have to take him seriously. Um, He's been with me for 10 years. He's used to my crazy. Um, Real quick, I'll tell you how how I used to do it. Every year I change my mind on how it should be laid out. Like this should be a no brainer. You lay it out the same way every year. And I'm like, absolutely not. And I, I cannot architecturally draw something. So I will sketch out my little stick things on literally like a paper napkin, a receipt. (laughs) We're talking on the phone. I'm at dinner and I'm like sketching it out on the menu and I take a picture (laughs) and he turns it into something beautiful. So like we can think in one brain. (laughs) Um, I have an amazing artist coordinator. Her name's April. She has worked with the artists. She was an artist. She still occasionally will get in paint. Um, She's been around for 12 or 13 years. Um, you know, Joe, he's a vendor, he's a vendor, he's a vendor coordinator, right? And then we have volunteer coordinators, Christina. So I have this, and musically, I have a production company, his name's Tim, he's fabulous. I have people the right people in the right places doing the right things. Um, and I thrive in chaos, right? I, I'm a fundraiser, I raise money for girls. I have to ask people for money, and so a lot of people can't do that, and I'm like, yay. I absolutely will do that. And so for me, it's like um, putting together all the pieces in puzzle, um, throwing them up in the air, hoping they land and make something of a picture and just praying it works. And um, I don't know that there's a secret recipe to it because I there's been a lot of times where I am like, 
I sit and I breathe on Monday morning when nobody's there and I'm waiting for the power washer to show up because I haven't seen any of the art. I'm like walking and I'm like, wow, we did this again. One more year. Like we pulled it off. <laughs> so it's it's great people. And it's easy. Really, the artists show up. They do amazing things and it makes me look good. <laughs> How long something like that? How long does it take to plan? Like, do, do you start planning that the next day after the event's over for next year? Like, so or? the first year that we got it, I'm not an event coordinator. I am now. Okay, so back then, I'd never run an event in my life. I put together a charity pillow fight as my kid's senior class project. <laughs> and I just happened to know some famous people that came out and did it. And so that was the only event I had ever really run. Um, didn't know what I was doing. That was a long time ago. And um, when I got the event, from the time that I got the event till the time that the event happened, I think we had like 11 weeks to pull off an event from nothing. Wow. And we did. You know, there were 100 artists, 100 vendors, new websites, oh like all the things. And so I think that comes with a lot of people on the back mm-hmm. end that say, I will help you. And um when we moved it to Louisville, I mean, the same thing. We ran into the first year, we almost had no attendance because nobody knew we existed. Mm-hmm. And I took for granted that the success we had in E-Town were, would follow us because I'm not an event coordinator. Well, I am now. but um, And so I think now we have it down to a science, kind of. Um, we have maps. I have a guy that does all the mapping. He literally pulls like, I don't know, these maps from the government or something. And I have the entire waterfront lawn mapped out in 10 foot squares because I have wow. wonderful <laughs> mapping people. Um, <laughs> and so um, it's just uh, um, lots of things pop up that you don't see coming. I promise mm-hmm. you. Um our emergency action plan now has an unforeseen circumstances paragraph because I've given up. I'm assuming that aliens are going to be the next thing that happened because <laughs> I've run out of what else could happen. And, um, you know, I think it's just, it, we are planning next year. We are planning two years. We are, you know, you could think as far as five years from now and parking lots and all the things and different ideas, but um, at, at its core, we've been doing it so long that every time, and it's me, it's always me. It's never anybody else that comes up with some crazy idea in the middle of the night. And I'm like, I think <laughs> we need to do this. And my whole team is like, absolutely not. And I'm like, we're doing it. And then I was like, oh, I should have listened to them. So, <laughs> but so. I mean, that type of dedication, waking up, having that idea and say, no, we need this. That's what's let it be six, as successful as it is for so long. You know, knowing that you can think of something in the middle of the night and still pull it off, knowing there's a way where there's a will, there's a way. So that's awesome. Well, I mean, think about it. How did you come up with your podcast? Did you just, <laughs> I mean, did, one day were you guys like, I think we should do a podcast and now you're doing a podcast. A little bit of both. We, we, it was a little bit of that. And then we've known each other for so long. We used to just hang out and talk about random subjects. And so that's just kind of translated, you know, it's, but yeah, to your point where there's a will, there's a way, you know, mm-hmm. we, we just make it happen. <laughs> just make I it work. Think, I think so, if you go, go ahead, Kayla. So with that being said, with the podcast, do you have like tips? Or, <laughs> because you, y'all seem like this is like, the perfect setup, you have the background moving. And it, se- it seems, from my perspective, it looks very easy. It, it, I don't feel like it is, though. <laughs> it's, so- it's a lot of evolution, as with the festival, because we started out with, like, if you look at some of our old, old videos, we have just, like, a, a four-grid square. We're both on different cameras, and we're trying to advertise stuff, have an internet window and all this. And one day we were like, you know what? we need to move down to one camera for space constraints and we still need to have a way to show the website and stuff, but we don't want to just be a block of a camera on a website if that's what we're looking at. So we're like green screen, you know, I mean the microphones, we started out with just the, the webcam mics or the GoPro mics. It's just a consistent evolution after every episode or like once a month or so we just kind of get together and we're like, what can we do? What can we make better? What can we change? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's just a constant evolution. 
I think you have that. And I think with like with the festival, there's such an authenticity to it. I have been on the ground painting. Mm -hmm. I did this for very, very, very big reasons. Right. And like when I was an artist and I've been a vendor, I've never been a musician. Please no. And, um, (laughs) but like I have done these things. So when people are frustrated with me, I'm like, tell me what, uh, tell me what we need to change. What do mm-hmm. you, some of those things are fabulous. And some of them I'm like, oh, absolutely. We would get arrested for that, <laughs> you know? And I think you have to look at it too. The event coming under Girl Scouts of Kentuckyana, right? Like everybody knows cookies. Like that's our thing. <laughs> that's if you true. don't have a favorite Girl Scout cookie, you're probably an alien, right? Yeah. And <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And so, but they don't know that our girls are, changing the world and they're creating inventory Mm -hmm. systems for foster care closets. They're creating mental health days and legislation for teenagers. They're um, creating pet memorial walks at, you know, uh, animal shelters. And they're, I mean, they're doing amazing things every year and you hear about the cookies, but sometimes you don't hear about that. And we have all these artists and each one of them do amazing things in the community. Every, I would say every person that is on the back end of this festival, which is like, I mean, probably close to a thousand people between the artists, musicians, vendors, you know, volunteers, different groups. We have science. Who has science at an art festival? I do have a whole STEM zone. Damn, I saw that. That's so cool. Yeah. And so like, I think when you look at that, each one of those people has a story. They have a reason for being there. There's a purpose behind it. And I think as an event coordinator, I am lucky enough to be in the position that I get to acknowledge that, hear it, collect it. And that gives me a reason to keep fighting for it. And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, I don't, I, I, that's the only thing I can tell you. So yes, yeah, chaos. It's so much. There's a lot. Um, it, it is what it is when you love what you do. It's, it's not chaotic. And when you're doing it for the right reasons, I'm very tired the week after the festival and you probably won't hear from me, but I guarantee it. And that's <laughs> you know, well-deserved, um, that's yeah, well-deserved but, rest, sleep and time off. <laughs> yeah. You know, but at the end of the day, I, I just put all the pieces together and mm-hmm. there are people that do a lot more work than I do. I it just, takes a village. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very much. So you mentioned aliens a couple of times and we were listening to, I think it was Oh, what was it? The art show or something. Uh, You mentioned that Google satellites had you guys had the festival on there for like, what was that like that realization? How did you even find that? How did you know that? Somebody sent it to me and they were like, is this your festival? Cause you're the only person that has artwork down there and you can see the artwork (laughs) from space. Right. And so I was like, Oh, does this mean I've made it? <laughs> like, <laughs> like when Google picks up your festival and you can see it from space, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> and then somebody went on and did it this year because we were looking at different um I don't know, she was looking for something and found it. And it's like our festival, but it's listed under somebody else's festival. So now somebody's trying to get that like listed as us. But <laughs> they have a new picture. I think they come out every October just to see. So I just have that's funny. Yay. That's so cool. I just thought that was funny. And then especially when you, I wanted to ask about that anyways, but when you had to mention aliens from space, I was like, this is perfect. Because come on. I mean, we have had 80 mile an hour straight line winds. We've had rain. We've had tornadoes. We've had all kinds of bad stuff. Right. And, and so I literally have said short of a monster coming out of the Ohio that eats people because it's the Ohio and I can see that (laughs) or aliens coming down from the sky because the government did say they were real. Like I I'm running out of things that like could happen. I mean, it hasn't snowed yet, but we planned for it. Yeah, but we are on it. (laughs) So That's with the weird. weather, how does the rain affect the festival? Have you had rain show up? And- no, 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 no. We don't. We don't ever say the R word. We don't. Talk I'm sorry. We don't. I'm gonna fi- like knocking on wood right now. <laughs> so last year we were. This is the funniest story because it shows the Philly in me, Kayla. I don't know if you were there for this, but it was on Sunday and it was about to rain, and I knew it was just going to be a cloud burst. So I was literally. We had. 40,000 rain ponchos delivered, donated to Girl Scouts. And so wow. I was throwing 
rain ponchos at strangers, people <laughs> attending the festival with rolls of duct tape. I'm like flying by on a golf cart winging rain ponchos. Duct- <laughs> I mean, people I don't know. And I'm like, okay, everybody needs to cover this artwork. <laughs> like a preschool <laughs> teacher. And all the artwork got covered. I mean, literally 127 paintings over however many feet that is got covered um, in what, six minutes? That's and it so rained crazy. A little bit and everything was covered. So, yeah, you can have rain that can wash everything away. We've had that a couple of times. Um, you can have rain that makes it impossible to set up on Friday night. I've had that. Um, you can have 70 mile an hour straight line winds and you're holding on to tents for dear life. We've had that. So, I think it's just, uh, again, it's the the measure of character of the people that come to the festival and are involved on the back end because everybody is willing to jump in and help. Mm-hmm. And that's so amazing. It goes back to it. Tax, it takes a village, but it also, it's a testament to the community, uh, the community message around everything that you're doing. And that's awesome. Um, it's fun. <laughs> and the most to chaotic work. definition of the word fun. <laughs> I I do. I put everybody to work though. I'm like, hi, random person. You're out having a taco with your friends, looking at art. You know, can you go take this chalk down to this person on your way down there? Because I have to go over there. <laughs> that's that's perfect. You know, we'll, we'll be there. So if you see us and need something, definitely let us know. Because don't ever, don't ever tell me that. In fact, hide from me because I will put you to work. Kayla has a baby and I will put that baby to work if he yeah. can like, you know, drag the chalk down to an artist. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> it works. <laughs> oh man. So speaking or kind of transitioning from that, especially because I know that our work can come out of nowhere. When it comes to the paintings, how long do they typically take people? Does it I guess it varies? Or, if you're Caleb Morgan, you're you can paint an entire painting in 86 minutes. That's um, my you know. right now, and it took me an hour. <laughs> oh, that one? Yeah. That's so cool. That took an <laughs> hour? An hour. Yeah. I can't imagine. That's 10, foot. That's 10 I, feet of painting, by the way. I couldn't um, even come up with a concept like that in an hour. So I'm trying to bring it to real life in that time. Kudos. So that's like, amazing. <laughs> My husband is notorious for jumping in and he's like, Kayla, he can knock stuff out in like, I don't know, a hot minute. Mm -hmm. I have other artists that, you know, they do the big portraits or they're doing individual hairs on a Persian cat. You haven't seen that one yet. Um, And it's, I mean, that was two days. And sometimes when the festival's over, they're still not done. Um, Some of our four by four artists are young kids. They get done and they come back and they go have funnel cake and they're like I think I need to add a dragon to that (laughs) whatever the thought process is and so that um, sugar rush hit (laughs) we we don't give them time limits um we we do we open for them at nine o'clock they can start and um because we have to grid everything at like four o'clock in the morning it's terrible Mm. um and then so once that's done and they start as long as as long as they leave before dark and whatever, they're good. But the the sad part is it all gets, it's gone Monday. I mean, literally by 11 o'clock, it's gone. It's like, it never existed. It's like sand castles or whatever you've and, and it's just going to be, it washes away, but still yep. an amazing time. Yeah. So Kayla, how does that, how do you take that and still like feel so driven to create such an amazing piece? You know, you know, it's there, like the paintings on your wall, like they can last almost forever. Right. How do you take something that you know is going to wash away and still just like that passion? Like, how? What's the inspiration that kind of drives that? That's well for me. It's I usually paint over paintings weekly, so I paint maybe about seven to nine paintings a week, and then the following week, if it doesn't sell, I usually paint over with a whole new idea. So honestly, the power washing thing is uh, just someone else giving me closure. (laughs) Gotcha. <laughs> That's okay. The easiest way to say it, but I'm used to like not seeing like most of my paintings have maybe about four to six paintings underneath them. Wow, mm-hmm. that's that's crazy. I never. I, I couldn't really imagine that, but I imagine when you're painting seven to nine paintings a week, that gets expensive really quick trying to have canvas and everything. So mm-hmm. you have so to I make do. People get so upset because I'll post them on Monday and then Wednesday I'm like, 
I'm overlooking at this one. This one will be painted over Friday. And they're like, <laughs> okay, that's fine. And if someone reaches out Saturday and I'll send them literally a black canvas and they're like, well, that's not the one I want. I'm like, that's the canvas now. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> that's fabulous. Like, I will tell you, I had a sassy little artist once tell me, cause I don't know the news was there or something. And um, so I was sitting talking to her and the news was interviewing her and she was probably seven. And you know, well, how do you feel that this won't be here in a couple of Days. I mean, and this sassy little girl was like, well, they should have come seen it when it was on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's all you need to know right there. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. I like her energy. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And that's what you need to do something like this. And it's just the people who do show up, it just exemplifies the passion that's behind it. You know, it's about the art and the expression. So that's so cool. Um, yeah, they're helping a good cause, right? So, mm-hmm. so you always have to remember at the end of the day that this helps. We have Casa does our kids zone. That's a huge charity that absolutely needs a platform. Girl Scouts of Kentucky, they're empowering female leadership. Like I know that sounds really trite, but that's the truth, right? Like Mm -hmm. we are inspiring girls to be strong and resilient. And so I think when you have artists coming out and interacting with the troops and interacting with the public and Girl Scout painting and women painting, no offense, guys. It's it's a thing, right? <laughs> and so we should embrace that. And I think um, there's lots of people that come out that aren't artists, but like professional artists. That uh, when you're an artist at this event, and Kayla, you can speak to this. You feel like you belong to something bigger than you, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Like I think. I, I mean. It, I think that that's why, you know, to be a featured artist for you, that was such an important drive. I didn't know that, by the way, that she wanted to do that. So that's bizarre. And then you got dragged onto this thing and (laughs) here we are. I planned, like, when I first met, and I was, I think I was 13 weeks pregnant and I was doing the chalk design. I was, I looked at my fiance, I was like, I want to be the featured artist by 2025. So when she called me, I was like, hysterically like crying because i was just like <laughs> i beat my goal a You're year early. <laughs> early that's so I, cool I, was like, I didn't want to freak out because i i came home and was still in shock like i, I was mm-hmm. like hey did you know and he was like oh yeah she asked me months ago i was like why didn't you, <laughs> you didn't give me no he, he was, was like, not allowed to tell yeah, you she, he was like do you think i would tell if she told me not to i was like oh, okay i understand i understand i was just I was caught off guard and super (laughs) excited because I felt like I haven't been doing much since I became a mother. So for that phone call to happen, it was just like, Dad, I guess I am doing a lot. Well, it's like you guys, you know, you you do your podcast, you highlight things that happen in Louisville and beyond, and um, you you become something bigger than you, right? Like it's Mm -hmm. more important than 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 you just sitting here. You're sharing a message, you're sharing stories, you're encouraging people to do things maybe outside the box. This is not much different. Everybody, you know, is an artist, right? So (laughs) my team a long time ago. I said something. I wanted something. I don't remember what it was. Robot. Oh, Vex Robotics. I wanted a Vex, Vex Robotic Battles in the middle of the festival because why not? And um, <laughs> they're like, but I was like, that's art. It's art and science. And mm-hmm. said, and everything is art if you really look behind it. And I said, and, and you just have to embrace that. I may not be able to create paintings like Kaylee can, or I may not be able to get on stage and perform. I may not be able to do a podcast every week, but I can absolutely express myself in other ways. And that should be celebrated because I think when people express themselves, they're exposing a very vulnerable side of themselves. Absolutely. I agree. I Quick side note about me, I guess. I love cars in the car community, and I've always considered them pieces of art. You know, some people do mm-hmm. things to cars that other people don't appreciate, but I've always tried to look at it as it's just an expression of themselves. That's what they wanted out of that in that moment, and that's fine. That's okay. You know, don't yuck someone's yum <laughs> is one of my favorite <laughs> sayings. I love that. I love that. <laughs> So that's so cool. And it it is such a community thing um, and just an art thing. Like you said, appreciation. We heard that the uh, you had the robots one year um, and I think the one of the other podcasts that we were listening to and um, 
we both looked at each other like we talked about them at one point battle bots yes uh-huh. like you mentioned you know what does eight-year-old dusty want at a festival we're like no 33 year old aaron wants that too so it's fine <laughs> yeah, i did i had the, the vex robotics teams um i had a friend who had a kid who was in it and they came and they all brought him for a couple of years um it became more weather related right so you have mm-hmm. you and I don't know if you've ever been to the waterfront after a week of rain, you're knee deep in mud. And Mm -hmm. I, it just was, we got to a point where we had to make (laughs) the decision. Some of the things that I've wanted that were cool. I had a giant dragon there one year, toothless, the dragon, this guy built like a scale one and brought it to E-Town from Indiana. And um, it was the coolest thing ever. Um, But then you have to really look at it. If, if it rains, if there's mud, what am I risking by having these really cool things that I want? And all the time people put into them. So like, um, it's even with my cosplayers, you know, I have to be very careful about, um, their equipment. These are people that put a lot of time and energy into Mm -hmm. it. So. Yeah. It's just really cool though. And, uh, you know, if somebody can't make it the next year, I'm sure you find a replacement that's just as cool from everything I'm hearing. So it's I so try. awesome. <laughs> I try. You know, <laughs> she succeeds. She doesn't try. She succeeds. <laughs> from everything I'm hearing and what I've seen, I would agree with that very much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> humble, humble, if, but you're succeeding. <laughs> if you could, if you could throw a party for 20,000 of your closest friends and you had, you know, pretty much car blanche to throw a party. Um, it, you, what would you want? And, yeah. and the, the problem with this, well, the problem with it a long time ago, my boss is hilarious, by the way. You'll get to meet her at the festival because um, I'll explain why she comes into this story. So back in Elizabethtown, there was a street painting festival and maybe like two food vendors and maybe a stage. And like you come, you look at the art, you leave. Who's involved mm-hmm. in that? The artists are involved. The musicians are people staying. Are they spending money? Are they enjoying the art? Are they supporting the artwork? Whatever. There's all these things. So when I took the festival over, first of all, it's a, it's a national brand. It's owned by a guy down in Florida named Rick. Rick sends me this contract. All these things I'm supposed to do. I don't think I actually did any of it for like three years. <laughs> um, so like the running joke is, is I read it and I was like, yeah, but how do you get something like this to be successful? Well, now you have to layer it. You mm-hmm. layer it by involving the community. Like the first year we had it in E-Town, we had a theater group. The kids came, did a scavenger hunt, talked to individual characters to find out who stole the dragon egg under City Hall. And then they went to the sheriff's department, got a little picture ID code with their fingerprint. So now every kid that was at the festival that year is in the system in case, God forbid, they are missing, right? But they oh. have a cool detective badge. Right. But like, awesome. it's it's the layering of that. And I think when you're yeah. building these things, you're throwing jello at a wall. So fast forward to Girl Scouts, my boss gets her, gets her job um, as the chief development officer. She comes to via the first year. She's sitting with me the second year. And she's like, I don't understand any of this. And how does it fit? And then I had to like explain 10 years yeah. of via calorie lore to her. <laughs> yeah. Know, like there's lore here. Like, so, you know, I think um, it's throwing jello against a wall. And now I think we have a pretty good story. I think we have a pretty good mm-hmm. reason. And I think we have lots of people who are involved, which is fun mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. Well, and when you're filling those certain niches, you know, whether it's the cosplay or the music or this or that, it makes other people feel welcome to get involved. Mm -hmm. And so that's an important part of it, you know, because I mean, if if we hadn't touched base like we did, then we would have been like, that's such a cool concept. But where could we ever fit in? You know what I mean? And then just Mm -hmm. seeing this whole thing, just since we've been talking, it's, it's so cool. You know, we, we understand and it's, it's so cool. You, that's how you draw people in is making them feel like they have a place. I have a TARDIS from Doctor Who. I'm a huge Doctor (laughs) Who fan. Okay. Like I'm a big geek when it comes to Doctor Who. I can tell you more than you ever need to know. But one year I said, I want a TARDIS and Justin is a cosplayer 
And he's like, they're really expensive. Well, a local college, ECTC Woodworking Department, reached out to me before the second VA was like, we built you a TARDIS. And I was like, <laughs> well, can I like, can I like just speak it into existence that I want things? <laughs> and so, um, so I have this TARDIS, which makes no sense to anybody. This thing has been beat up. You know, we're like duct taping it together at this point. It's 10 years old. It's been in the wind. It's been in the rain. It fell off the back of a truck once. Oh, no. <laughs> like, but that TARDIS is like at an art festival, beautiful museum quality art pieces on the mm -hmm. ground. And that is our meeting spot. Like everybody come to the TARDIS. There's an emergency. Go to the <laughs> like it's become like this part of this festival. And so like, it makes no sense why it's there, but it's there and people look for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> it's know. there's so much just history i told you i was like there's so much it's a mess the kitchen sink well, is my favorite story i was actually about to bring that up because you told us about the kitchen sink and i think you sent us the picture to actually it, it just came right up there. talk about timing yeah <laughs> oh my gosh so first year 11 weeks had to get this thing together i get on the radio the radio's involved local station small town e-town and I, I made an off comment i was he's like what's there and i started listing things and he's like well you have so much and i was like oh it, everything but the kitchen sink I show up back then e via was one day. So I just need to explain. Mm -hmm. We did all this in one day, set up, wow. clean up all the festival done. Right. And I showed up at like four o'clock in the morning. No, it was like three o'clock in the morning at E-Town to shut the roads down. Cause we did it around the main square and there was a sink sitting on the corner. <laughs> and I was like, what? is that and then the person who dropped it off was like well you said you needed a kitchen sink i said i didn't say Just i needed case. a sink i said i had everything but the sink <laughs> so we got the poster board and then but what was funny was the mayor the police chief the sheriff they were all posing with the kitchen sink with the kitchen in sink. the middle of the festival that's so funny. My favorites. That was year one. I should have known then that it was all downhill. <laughs> Every year is an adventure after that happens. <laughs> oh, man. So transitioning a little bit, since you said you started as an artist, right, with the festival. Um, now as the organizer, how does the feeling of accomplishment and passion really translate between the two? And have you ever had an opportunity to still be an artist? Oh, um, so I steadfastly held on to being an artist and an event coordinator for three years after I took it over. And I was determined to do both because I wanted like in my brain, I wanted 10 years of street painting. I got to nine. Um, and that's only because my husband finished my painting. Um, and, and then I realized I couldn't do both. Thank God for Justin. He held the festival down while I was like, you know, painting on the ground, totally ignoring everything going on for two hours, um, in a festival I was running. Um, and then I had to make a decision and I had to decide if being an artist was more important than keeping the festival going. And it was a hard decision. Mm -hmm. Um, there were very emotional reasons why I became an artist, all the different pieces that I did over the years translated for different reasons and different stories. Um, and I think that I look at it as an accomplishment that I have pulled it off and that it's still going on and that people are still like, I think this festival's cool. You know, I'm like this Absolutely. in my head in the middle of the night. Like, um, and, but I think it's a testament to stepping away from something you love to preserve something you love. So I loved being an artist, but I love the idea of providing space for artists to be artists more mm -hmm. than I love being an artist, if that makes sense. And I get, I'm lucky. I get to meet everybody. I get to know them on a first name basis. They talk to me. I get to see people every year. I get to make new relationships. I get to talk to donors and people who support the festival. Like all that back end, I love people as much as I love being creative. And so for me, I get to be, I met you guys. You're getting dragged into the wonderful quirky <laughs> world that is Bia. Um, you know, and I get to share kind of this thing that's like, important to me with thousands and thousands of people over more than a decade of my life. And my kids do it. 
my kids have all painted at it. My husband's painted at it. At, yeah. We have a we have a UK connection, like literally from Wales. Like there are these moments that are special to me that I get to have that I'm lucky to have that I wouldn't have had if I would have just said, okay, just cancel the festival. Yeah, it wouldn't. I wouldn't know Kayla. I wouldn't know you. I would be sad and depressed. <laughs> you wouldn't know to be sad and depressed because you wouldn't know. I would feel like something's missing though. Oh, I love you. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool, and I'm. It's it's awesome to hear that the way you said that. You know, take stop doing something you love to preserve something you love. I think that's a beautiful way to put it. And I think you're doing just that. So it's, Thanks. it's a very cool thing. Um, and you're providing that same experience of what you love to hundreds of other people, hundreds of other girls, hundreds of other vendors, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff. The It's a family event, like you said, and uh-huh. that's, that's amazing. And <laughs> I can't imagine the, it, it seems like, 365 days a year you are thinking about Via. <laughs> Via no, Corey. I promise you that is not the case. <laughs> it, I would <laughs> have to. It's like three days of the year, like Christmas, <laughs> when I go kayaking and maybe my wedding anniversary. I am literally not thinking about it. Um, I actually, I, I think about it, but I don't. I, I, what I think about is um, I have all these people in my world mm-hmm. now that I wouldn't. And I have all these friends and associates and business connections and people who are just good people. And um, I'm very lucky. Like, I don't say that in like, a hum- I mean, I'm humble, but I'm also like, I have this amazing team who pulls yeah. this off every year. And I don't know why they keep coming back because I am a nightmare <laughs> to work with. And they keep coming back and saying, hey, we'll give you all this time for free because it's a good cause. And I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know why. But, but if I called them tomorrow and said, I need help with anything else, they would yeah. be there. But if they called me tomorrow, I would be there too. And I think when you, right. when you have the opportunity to build these communities, that's vital. That is mm-hmm. vital in the, in this time, in this day and age with everything going in the world. You need to have a community of people who are authentically helping and authentically wanting to do things bigger than they are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very well said. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Kayla, we saw on the website that you volunteered to teach the girls. I think we heard a little bit about that. You hold workshops with the Girl Scouts and stuff to kind of prepare them how would you describe the difference between being the artist and being the teacher, trying to explain to these young girls how to do what you do? So my, I have three aunties and my mother's a teacher. So it's probably in my blood. Um, But uh, the difference from artists is I can lock in Mm -hmm. and I'm in my own zone. And then with the girls, I have to literally put myself in their shoes, which their shoes are smaller. So mm-hmm. I have to break things down a little more simplistic. But um, other than that, I kind of love being on the levels, like the same level as the girls, just because uh, we make clay cookies so they can forever have a cookie later okay. on in life, bring it to college or whatever as a, a paperweight, whatever they want to do with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I would at first just do chocolate chip cookies. And then one girl was like, that's so basic. Can I not do the tag along? So, and I was like, Oh, I can do next year. I can do something different. <laughs> then the same girl came back and was just like, why will my tag along with sprinkles now? So now I'm adding <laughs> each thing. So it's just, every time I come back, I have more ideas from just being with them for four or five hours, just teaching them just cookies. They brought it my perspective on colors, shapes, ideas, getting down to their level with their own perspective. Mm-hmm. It's just, I don't know. The artist is like myself and then teaching is more like they're more, I, I, I guess that's more cliche, but they're teaching me type of mm-hmm. type of thing. That sounded so cliche. That was like, terrible. no, no, it's awesome. <laughs> no, it's not each perfect. other. Definitely. Yeah, it's perfect. You know, uh, it always takes a different perspective to kind of learn and grow beyond what you already know. You know, we we get introduced from different perspectives, from so many different ways, so many different people, whether young, old, whatever. So that was that was awesome. It's awesome to know that. Um, on the website, you had this quote: "I hope mm-hmm. I inspire a little girl to keep painting, a mom to pick that brush back up, and show black people that we create amazing art too." 
being a black artist who, you know, used to be a little girl and now a mom, all those roles are hard enough. How do you find time to maintain and inspire or like who or what has inspired you over the years to keep doing it? Cause I have a daughter and I, I don't, how do you make the time and who and what inspires you to keep doing it? Um, at first to keep doing it was my fiance because he would do these amazing pieces, but was too lazy to, um, put them places. So then mm-hmm. I took the role on, uh, and that kind of motivated me. And then after my, I found out I was pregnant and I was having a boy that motivated me to show him that, um, I don't want someone, I don't want him to fall in love with someone like me, but I want him to have a higher ranking. So not just anyone can get him. So, <laughs> and that's, whatever uh, way he wants to go, I want them to have a a high ambition. And I can't just tell him to find someone with uh, ambition and want to grow and challenge themselves. I kind of want to show it to him. So Mm -hmm. currently I've been strapping him to to me and painting murals. So I've been recording those and then also uh, showing him how to do art himself because I've been selling his pieces too. So I've been just trying to... uh, use him as motivation to show him that it's a different path than just the regular go to college and be an artist, which my fiance did. I kind of dropped out of college and did the art thing type of path. So I want to be the motivation that it can be your own path and you can still get to the goal you want to get to. That's so cool. That's, that's amazing. Kids definitely make you start thinking about things a lot different once they show (laughs) up. (laughs) Yeah. It, it definitely changes perspective on everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I used to have nightmares about just like, and this is probably the weirdest thing to say, monsters in the closet type of thing. Now, my nightmares are more like Law & Order episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <So> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I get it. A hundred percent. Annabelle is everything. And with school having started just this last week, and now she's sick bless her heart you know first day of school second day is she had two days they went thursday and friday and now she's got a little cold it's like that's, but that's all it takes is like change your perspective you're like oh man <laughs> yeah. do we go to the doctor do we just give her some cold medicine like mm-hmm. it's the it's the first full week of school do i need to write i guess i have to write her a note if she can't go yeah. tomorrow like your whole perspective on life just changes it's all about yeah. them and is so that your first is that your first yep by the time you get to five, you're like, oh, you're like, fell off here. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. He's a one. And he's going to be my yeah. one. And <laughs> I'm the second oldest of five. I have an older sister and I have four younger sisters who were adopted. And so I, I saw everything my parents went through. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just keep it right here. I'm mm-hmm. struggling enough with this. <laughs> My 14 year old is always trying to do something. I'm like, there were five before you. There's, and then I was before them. There is nothing. You'll be fine. Put your leg on with duct tape. It's fine. Yeah. And that's funny. I've always heard the thing, you know coworkers and things talk about the difference between like your first child and your fifth child and how you treat them different. And they talk about it. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm right in the middle. I think there's a blend. Like I'm not an overbearing parent. She gets away with way more than she should. But at the same time, she knows how to help herself. She knows how to get herself water and get herself a drink or a snack. If all these things. So I'm like, I I'm comfortable with where I'm at. (laughs) And hopefully she is too. (laughs) I don't want to start over. That's my only issue. Is that to too. I don't, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> that I love too. him to death, but oh, I can't. <laughs> oh, he is a, he is amazing. <laughs> he is. I love him. He just sold another piece today. So he is Yay. absolutely amazing. But yeah. uh, no, I can't go back to the change. <laughs> We're at the end of changing the diapers. I can't go oh, back. Oh, yeah. Again. That was a big moment. That was such a big moment. <laughs> definitely <laughs> he's 17 months by the way so like literally trying wow. to potty train him is like a whole yay moment for me. <laughs> yes yes she was so funny because she was she made a post on facebook she's like i gotta paint at the end what do i do with my baby and i was like you put him in my golf cart that's <laughs> like there should be he can be the event coordinator for an hour while you do what you do <laughs> and like, he will be 
totally fine with rolling with you that whole day. <laughs> yeah, I put a hat on him. He can yell at people, and I'll tell them oh. that kid needs whatever he needs. <laughs> Juice like box. The, yeah, I'm apple the fairy, sauce. I'm the fairy godmother. Nobody wants oh. for their kids. But what? They want them I until want, like I'm so mad you, know. you live so far away. I miss you. <laughs> Like send me all your children. I promise you, they'll come back and they'll have a lot more sassiness. <laughs> oh no, Annabelle does not need more of that. <laughs> Goodness, she's a handful as it is. She got into school after her first day, or got in the car after her first day of school, and oh, you could tell that that willpower meter was at the bottom. She's like, I've you held need- my tongue all day for my teacher. You're getting all of it. <laughs> you need to get that girl into Girl Scouts. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yes. Oh, oh so man. Those, I just spent, so I did special effects makeup forever. I just spent the afternoon teaching 17 Girl Scouts how to like make themselves look like they've been in horrible accidents. They were oh, like, no. more blood, more blood. And I'm like, this is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Show you how to burn yourself. Right. But they were, <laughs> it was amazing to like, they're just, I don't know. Kids these days have so much more, they're so much more empowered to be. Mm-hmm themselves which is fabulous yes Mm -hmm. and that is something that's important to us we make sure that she she has a word in almost everything and she gets to decide almost everything you know whether it's breakfast Mm -hmm. lunch dinner her clothes for the day when she gets to go somewhere if she doesn't want to most of the time she doesn't have to so we we make sure but if she wants to paint we do our best to make sure she's got a, a Russian paper, even if she's just putting random paint splotches on a piece of paper, you know, empowerment is important. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important that you do this, you know, this whole festival, keep doing it and keep involving kids. It was really important to me. I know when I took it over, um, you know, if you look at traditional street painting festivals, they're professional artists, they Mm -hmm. do amazing things. And there's like this little kid chalk zone and You know, I I just was sitting there and I was like, okay, I can't in good conscience say to this eight-year-old that does amazing work, whether it's eight-year-old skill level or 18 or 80, doesn't matter, that because they are not an adult professional artist, that their art doesn't matter. So I kind of really like, I don't, I didn't even entertain discussions otherwise. And Mm -hmm. so that it, it was validated in, I mean, over the years, plenty of times, but in 2021, when we first came under Girl Scouts, <laughs> there was this little Daisy Girl Scout. So that's five years old, signed up to be an artist. And of course she's a street painter. She shows up with this little art kit and her apron, and she is just ready to <laughs> spend all day chalking on this four foot square. Oh. That's so cool. And, it, and I put her next to a professional artist, which was even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the empowerment they need. You know, it, that's the empowerment they need to know that they can succeed in whatever they want to do. So yeah, it's beautiful. It's so cool. It's, um, and you know, people are like, well, how, cause you know, each artist is sponsored and that's how the charity makes the money. Like mm-hmm. businesses will sponsor the art. Um, and so you know, sponsor, people have said to me, sponsors aren't going to pay for that stick figure. And I was like, sponsors aren't sponsoring the stick figure or getting it. They don't, it does. Sometimes it doesn't matter. They're sponsoring the charity and just celebrating that there's art involved in it. Yep. And that's beautiful. It's a perfect way to kind of put a nice little bow on the whole thing. And it's benefiting everybody in some way, form, or fashion, whether it's the businesses involved, the vendors, the mm-hmm. artists, the spectators, you know, everybody. So it's so I cool. can't wait for you guys to see it. I would, li- I would love like, to come back like after and get like your feedback on it. You could be like, oh, this was, this of was, course. A- we I would didn't love understand that. it till she said it. <laughs> we would love that. We will definitely make that happen. And hopefully ha- uh, have you guys back on a few times before then just to kind of continue to promote it. Totally. Oh, yeah, we would love that. One of the things, I I mean, you learn as you go. And people, I I don't understand how people haven't heard about it. People will tell me that, like, I've never heard about it until whatever. I'm talking about it wherever. And I'm like, really? Because I have 
literally dressed up like a unicorn and stood on fourth street in Louisville, <laughs> Purdue, like on a radio show live at five o'clock in the morning, waving at rush hour. How have you not heard about this? That was awful. <laughs> I ate hot wings and I don't like spicy food to promote oh, this no. festival. I went on like a hot wing show where you had to eat like spicy salsa. It's on the internet forever. And I I did that. <laughs> Just promote like, don't tell me you haven't heard about the festival. <laughs> Please. Oh, well. You will hurt my salsa eating heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's it. You kind of exemplify one thing I was going to say is that like, Art kind of transcends everything, you know, art transcends language before written language was really a thing. We drew stick figures on cave walls, you know, and it it transcends age. It transcends communities. It transcends time. And it's, you've really shown that to be a thing and how much of a passion it is and how passionate you are about it both of you it's just it's so cool to see that and see it truly exemplified and we're so happy to be a part of it i'm so happy you are a part of it like i i think that um kayla is all of we've had so well we've had 16 featured artists right and so kayla's been the most i'm not no offense to any of my other artists but she's She's hilarious on Facebook, right? Like so she's <laughs> out there promoting this. They all do all the featured artists. We have other artists that do huge TikTok things. And there's a guy that comes from Nashville every year. He's amazing, right? So I think you have this, um, you have this opportunity to just talk to people and hear what they have to say. And it 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 makes it all worth it. It really does. Like and then I get to go to Girl Scouts and I get to see girls at camp sailing <laughs> boats and I get to see them, you know, in their troops. And yeah. it supports the it supports girl membership and like camp scholarships. Right. So like mm-hmm. we don't ever want there to be a financial barrier to Girl Scouting. And yep. so um, this event directly supports that. <laughs> so I will tell people obnoxiously like, you know, you may not like that painting on the ground or you may not think that that subject matters, which you think should be in chalk art. But that that painting right there is going to send three girls to summer camp this year and get to have experiences they've never had. So um, yeah. keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I Again, I I have an older sister, three younger sisters. My three younger sisters were in Girl Scouts for a time. And then of course I have my daughter. So mm-hmm. it's I fully support everything that you're you're doing and pushing for. I love it. I think it's awesome. So awesome. before we end everything out, just to kind of we've talked a lot of the philosophical art and you know how it's all come to be, the history. What are some of the vendors and food and entertainment type things that like specifically that people can expect to see if they're walking through? Look, I'm going to say this because I, I'm not going to say I have favorites because I don't, but there is this lady that comes every year. I don't know where she came from. I don't know why she came from, but she's got these magical biscuits. It's called Mary's Twisted Biscuits. Kayla's laughing at me because she goes, I don't know what she puts in these things, but they're like $5. And if you see me eating 10 of them, (laughs) just keep walking by. Mind your own business. um, Because I will be shoving these things into my face while I am golf carting to another end of the property to solve a problem with like Mary's Twisted Biscuits in my mouth. Um, But so we have... um, West Six comes out. We have the um, guys from Crowler Catering. They come out. And so we have a bar area. So that's always helpful. They do some fabulous cocktail amazing things. And West Six is just fabulous. Then we have um, all kinds of food. So we have hot dogs, um, gourmet hot dogs. We have Indian food. Um, the uh, From what I've been told, the best Mexican food ever. Um, I don't know. I don't eat it. Um, but I'll just take everybody's opinion. We have Thai food. Um, we have all kinds of baked goods, freeze dried candy. Vendors run the gambit. Everything from people doing their own artwork to people selling oddities to somebody selling mugs to somebody selling t-shirts to, um, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter, whatever. Um, our sponsors get vending booths. We have a STEM zone, which is sponsored by Dow. 
Um, I do not ask me what the STEM activity is this year because I haven't gotten that far in planning. Last year we made air rockets. Um, and then they could, it was a NASA experiment and then they could measure like the distance and things like that. So that's all free, um, for, because it's sponsored. Um, we have an art scavenger hunt where they can earn a patch, um, as long as supplies last, because, you know, um, it's a little crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. and so they have to go, you know, look for specific kinds of art and talk to the artists. Um, CASA, um, the Jefferson County for the Louisville area, the court appointed special advocates runs our kids zone. So there is um, kid games and activities and prizes and things like that. The Mandalorian Mercs and 501st will be there from Star Wars. Um, Louisville Hackerspace will be there. I'm sure not breaking into the Pentagon from the festival. That's the only (laughs) rules I have asked them not to. Don't get me arrested. Um, That's right. (laughs) So we have a bunch of other cosplayers. Our music um, is... This year provided by um, Louisville School of Rock. And then we have several bands. You can go to our website um, to check them out. They're fabulous um, who donate their time. So all of this is donated. They're the musicians. And then on day two, the entire day is going to be bands from Encore School of Music and Arts. Um, Our production is um, absolutely professional. Um, the only complaint I ever get about Via is that the music sometimes is not what people expect. And then I have to politely in my most passive aggressive Philadelphia way say, <laughs> these are children bands and you should encourage their bravery and getting on stage in front of complete strangers yeah. to perform at a festival. And that's pretty much where I leave it. Um, my vendors are fabulous. A lot of my street painting artists are vendors. So they bring their artwork, you know, to, and then we have, um, we have some Girl Scouts that do some amazing money earning troops. Um, you know, it's, it's not, we're not done. Our, all of our registrations don't fill it. We don't close everything until October 1st. I used to make it the day before the festival. And I think I might've mentioned that people wanted to quit for other things. They definitely wanted to quit for that. Um, <laughs> so now I'm, I cut it off at August or October 1st and, mm-hmm. um, we, I think we only have two spots left for street painting, though. So that's wow. a, that's a thing. Yeah. If they they only have so much up, space. They're all mine. They're all mine. <laughs> they don't show yes. up. And we provide. We she said, provide, I have ideas. <laughs> we provide all the chalk. And so it's professional okay. street painting chalk. It's not like sidewalk chalk. That's um, cool. We, it, it's, it's. There's, you can crush it and add water to it and make it like an acrylic and paint with it. You can chalk with it. You can watercolor with it. There's all kinds of different techniques that people use. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, our food vendors are fabulous and provide me a discounted rate for lunches for our artists um, as they're part of their donation. So all the artists can go support our food. So like I support the food vendors that are there. Panera offers our artists free breakfast. They come out and do amazing Panera E things. Nice. Um, I mean, I don't, there's so much. I would just say, check yeah. the website. We have just discovered, and by we, I mean, Justin, who I'm going to drag on here if it kills me. Um, <laughs> he, he, he does our TikTok videos. So that I think there's four now because we just got on TikTok. Um, so you can check our Facebook, our TikTok, our Instagram, Girl Scouts of Kentuckiana um, website. We're on there. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of being everywhere that we can get right now. So for year 16, you know, it's our sweet 16. <laughs> we <laughs> still, I told you this earlier, the festival's old enough to drive, you know, like we <laughs> yes. want it to be fabulous. And it sounds like it's going to be, um, you can tell again, I've said it numerous times, the passion that's involved, whether it's from you, the artists, everybody that's involved, the community. It's such an amazing story. I can't wait to see it in person. See, Kayla, um, do you see that picture right there mm-hmm. with the dragon? That's yeah. me. Oh, yeah. What? That's, that's me. That's the first Via. Wow, Sorry, I'm okay. to interrupt you. No, that's perfect. I was wondering. To, like, scroll by. Because I knew you had said that you sent one, and I didn't know if you said you were actually one of them that you sent, but that's so cool. That's so awesome. That, that first year, that dragon, there was a big quotation mark at the top of it, and it said, sleep safely and dream big. 
And I always tell people I was very concerned about staying in my little box, right? Like my little assigned <laughs> box. Yeah. And I never went outside the lines until like years later. And then I forgot that the lines even existed and took up entirely too much space. <laughs> um, I did like a 30 foot octopus one year, but um, <laughs> the, so that's the thing. I want people to feel safe. I want them to feel safe being vulnerable, but I want them to dream big. And my mm-hmm. artists have to stay in the lines because we just don't have enough concrete. Don't have but, enough space. Right? <laughs> you know, feel free to do more than one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the goal is three. <laughs> I told her, when I, whoever doesn't show up, I'm just putting her name on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to say, just give it to me. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so fun. And you can just, again, you can see how you, both of you, it's been you know, a few months and you can tell that you both just can't wait to be there again. Mm -hmm. And that's so cool. Thank you so much for bringing that energy to us and telling us all about it and all about yourselves. It's, it's been an amazing story. Um, It's going to be an amazing festival. I can't wait. We're excited. My daughter can't wait. Yeah. It's, it's going to be Dude, fun. You, guys, you need like press passes, like feel free <laughs> to like totally come and be like, I'm, I, we're press. And oh, I mean, we're it's down. a free festival. You can go wherever you want to. But <laughs> right, exactly. Like, at least that way, maybe you can get like in the art tent to see like behind the scenes, some of the cool things. Cause like our artist coordinator, she'd be like, are you an artist? Do you have your bracelet? You're not going in there. <laughs> the talk is like no, but we're press. We're yeah, press. <laughs> our talk's like Fort Knox. Like you can't get in there, um, and it's it's you know it's hilarious because we we have to be very careful about people like chalking everything down there, like swings and light yeah. posts and things like that. So we got to keep a lid on it. But yeah, we should get you like press passes, and you can like do all the fabulous podcasty things that you do in whatever capacity you want to do it with. We would love that. Awesome. That would be so fun. Just kind of get a sneak peek of certain things in certain places. And we definitely hope to talk to some people out there. Kayla, uh-huh. hopefully you can give us a few minutes, you know, since it only takes you an hour or so to do such an amazing art. You, I hope you have a few minutes to talk to us while we're down there. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. <laughs> We're yeah, gonna try and if to... you guys need to like record while you're down there and stuff, we have electricity, right? So you can charge things and do things. And um, awesome. Um, look, I run the event. Do you, do, I, I don't know if I can get Godzilla there, but you know, I can <laughs> I can try to get things there that you need. But I just think um, I can't wait. For, I love when people who haven't seen it get to see it yeah. for the first time. I'm like <gasps> like a kid on Christmas. I'm like, oh, what are they gonna think? <laughs> Well, I have very high expectations. I will say that now. You've very you've you've really sold it. So my expectations are pretty high, but I have no doubt that it's going to exceed. Mm-hmm. So, thank you, thank you for so, having us and like answering my crazy email request. Hi, you know, like I don't know you, but can you talk to me? I'm I'm nuts. I promise. Hey, <laughs> we feed off of that. Believe me, it helps us like knowing that there's still things that we can talk about and people that we can introduce and bring on and talk to. So we, we feed off of that. We thrive on that. So no, we, we need more of that. <laughs> so thank oh, well, you. I got 127 artists. <laughs> if you ever need to talk to people, I'm sure they'll all tell you their story. I got a, a logistics director. I can, I don't know. He'll quit if I make him come on here. So we'll just talk about Justin like him passing as like some kind of celebrity. So Justin, we love you. Thank you for everything you do. Yes. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> you haven't met him. He's fabulous. Oh man. Well, I guess with that, we'll go ahead and close this one out. You got anything else you want to add or ask? Nope. We appreciate it. Do you guys have anything else that you want to bring up that we didn't cover? No, if you want to, vo- hang on, Kayla. If you want to volunteer, because <laughs> I know what she's going to do, and I'm going to give her all the spotlight. If you want to volunteer, if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a vendor, if you want to be a sponsor, please, if you want to be a sponsor, you want to give us money, um, go to viacaloriekentucky.com. But do it soon. We have like two artist space left. Our vendor spots are selling out quickly. Um, we're full on musicians, but we still need volunteers. And then Kayla can have all the fabulousness to talk about her amazingness. Um, all I want to say is if any of the artists uh, get sick and they're looking at this, um, don't come so I can take your square. <laughs> I have at least nine ideas ready. And then uh, follow me at Who Don't Love Art. That is my business page. And that's all. 
Awesome. We'll make sure to get as many links in the description as we can. And so everybody will be able to find everything that is the awesomeness of Via Calori and also Kayla's art. So with Thank that, you. I guess we'll go ahead and close this one out and we will catch you on the next one. They're off in the Kentucky Derby. I'm great, and if you keep talking jazz, I'm gonna tell you the facts.